MMA Boxing Talk here. Just wanted to put out a video talking about last night's huge upset. Um, I haven't done a video in a long time. Uh, it's been over a year, 14 months to be exact. Um, but, you know, in an upset this monumental, I thought I'd, you know, make a video giving my thoughts. I'm also going to put out a prediction video next week for UFC 238. It's a stacked, stacked pay-per-view event. Uh, a lot of good fights on that card. Really looking forward to that. So uh, keep an eye out for next week for a prediction video for UFC 238. Last night's fight, though. Wow. What an upset. What what a shock to the boxing community, to the, to the sports community. I had a buddy text me this morning. Not a huge boxing fan. Definitely a casual, and you know, he's like, I don't know much about what's going on here, but this upset is plastered over my timeline. He just wanted to know uh, the whole story behind it, whatever. Um, this is crazy, you know, everyone's talking about it. Uh, Andy Ruiz Jr., of course, TKOs Anthony Joshua in the seventh round. Uh, it was a crazy fight. Hats off to Andy Ruiz. He was, uh, I believe, a 13 to 1 underdog. Uh, some places had him as high as 25 to 1 underdog, but I think 13 to 1 is probably a little more accurate. Um, huge, huge upset. Biggest upset in a long, long time. Um, the last time an upset this big was, you know, Vladimir Klitschko versus Corey Sanders in 2003, or Lennox Lewis versus uh, Hasim Rahman in 2001. Um, you know, Obviously, um, Andy Ruiz is a shorter guy. He's got fast hands. He's pretty athletic in there for despite what his physique might might tell you. Um, a lot more experience than Anthony Joshua. You know, this guy had uh, over 100 amateur wins. He has more professional fights than Anthony Joshua. Maybe Anthony Joshua coming into this fight took him a little lightly. Um, that wouldn't surprise me one bit, not, you know, going into this fight, no one really thought Andy Ruiz was going to win, um, I'm sure Joshua didn't think he was going to lose, you know, a guy, a 6'2", pudgy Mexican, um, you know, who lost to Joseph Parker, you know, Joshua probably wasn't too worried, um, now, in the third round, Joshua dropped Ruiz, and when Ruiz got, it was a nice clean shot. It, you know, it was definitely a, a solid knockdown. But when Ruiz got back up, Joshua proceeded to, you know, go for the kill to try to get him out of there. And it was a big mistake. And in the process, he got clipped um, on top of the head and as well behind the ear. I'm, I'm not sure if that was all in the third round, but he definitely got hit and his equilibrium went and he was he was basically done by the third round despite, you know, making it to the seventh round, probably talks a little bit about, probably says something about his, his uh, conditioning. Joshua is definitely in good condition uh, because his equilibrium went in that third round, and I'm surprised he made it to the seventh. Um, so he drops Ruiz, and then he gets dropped, going for the kill. He opens himself up, gets dropped. Also hits the canvas a second time in that third round, and then... In rounds, you know, four, five, and six, he was in survival mode, and those rounds were swing rounds. You know, he, they could have went either way. Ruiz probably won a few of them, um, and then the seventh round came. Joshua landed a nice shot. I, I believe after that they they exchanged hooks, and Ruiz just followed up and kept peppering him, and you know, fast. Fast, fast uh, hand speed and combination punching with power combined. Uh, drop Joshua, put him on the canvas another two times. And then, you know, in my opinion, there was no controversy um, with the stoppage at all. Joshua spit his mouth guard out. He made, you know, he got to his feet and beat the count, but proceeded to, you know, turn his back to the ref, walk to the corner, have his hands on the ropes. You know, and the ref saying, you can't do that. Like, are you ready? Joshua said, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. But his words were saying he was ready. But his actions, his body language were, sh were saying something completely different. He didn't have any interest in continuing. So the ref stopped it. 
It, you know, it was a good stoppage on the ref. No complaints from me. Now, you know, a lot of people are going to say Anthony Joshua was washed. Uh, you know, he's done. He'll never, you know, he was nothing. Uh, he's a bum. He's no good. All of that is BS. Um, Joshua could have easily won that fight if he stayed behind his jab, you know, stayed at distance, picked him apart from, you know, range. Um, the problem is, is when he dropped Ruiz in the third round, first knockdown of the fight, and there was five knockdowns in this fight, he got overzealous. He went for the kill. He, he opened himself up to be countered, and Ruiz took advantage. And hats off to Ruiz because he is a good fighter, and people were counting him out. Um, you know, this is a guy, like I said, over 100 amateur wins, more uh, pro experience than Joshua as well. Um, both guys went the distance with Joseph Parker. That tells you a little bit, a little something that he obviously isn't. He obviously was going to this fight. Andy Ruiz was a worthy opponent. Um, it's crazy. It's really crazy. Um, but Joshua's career, it's not over. Uh, don't kid yourself. There's been a lot of guys that have been quote unquote, uh, you know, chinny, uh, to have lost, not been knocked out and come back, regain the title and ha go on to have long careers. You know, Vladimir Klitschko comes to mind. Um, you know, he was upset by Corey, Corey Sanders, knocked out. He was also knocked out by Lamont Brewster the next year. And he went on after that to have a nine year, uh, title reign. One of the, the longest, uh, you know, streaks in, in heavyweight history. Also, Lennox Lewis was, you know, stopped by Oliver McCall. He was also stopped, knocked out by um, Hasim Rahman. He avenged that loss. He went on to defend his title more after that. Um, and these fighters, they Klitschko and Lennox Lewis, um, they changed their style. You know, they became smarter they sharpen things up they tighten up their defense and anthony joshua definitely can do the same he's not too old i think he's 29 um and his experience he, let's be honest this is only this is only his 23rd fight not to make excuses but um you know he just doesn't have the experience like uh some of these guys do you know he didn't have that amateur career and, you know, Joshua has, has has beaten guys that have way more experience than him. And he got in trouble against Klitschko. And he, he, he still, you know, managed to win that fight. Um, but tonight, you know, against a guy in his prime, um, against a guy, let's be honest, he's, Joshua has always struggled against the smaller guys. Like Carlos Takam uh, gave him a lot of problems. Um, and I knew Ruiz was going to give him some sort of issues. I still thought Joshua was going to win. I thought he'd get a late, you know, ninth or 10th round stoppage. Clearly, it was the opposite. Um, but I do think Joshua can correct the mistakes. I think he can come back from this. Uh, it's a wake-up call. But uh, now he has the opportunity to have a comeback story. You know, all, there's so many fighters in history that have lost... Their, their title and come back to regain it. Now he has that opportunity. I don't know if the rematch will be immediate. Um, either way, uh, Joshua's career is not over. I'm looking forward to him in the future. And, you know, um, obviously that, that puts the, the, the Deontay Wilder fight on hold for a while. But it wasn't even in the near future anyway. Um, and I just thought it was so funny how... Uh, you know, Tyson Fury, he he had a response, and Deontay Wilder, he had a response to Joshua losing last night, and I thought their their responses, you know, the other two of the big three, their responses were very indicative of, you know, how they see the sport and the future, and it just said a lot. Um, you know, Wilder was very negative, saying, you know, you were never a champion. Your career was based on, you know, consisted of lies and, 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 and whatever. And almost, not celebrating, but it kind of seemed like happy, you know. I don't have to deal with you anymore. You know, you lost your shot, blah, blah, blah. Where, where Tyson Fury, he was 
more uplifting to, to Joshua. He said, you know, this is the heavyweight division. It happens. You'll come back. We'll see you again. You know, the heavyweight division, that's how it works. Um, and not kicking a guy while he's down, you know. Wilder took the opportunity to, oh, you know, to one-up you, you know. Oh, now I'm ahead of you. And just, I just thought it was a... Um, it was just it just showed his character like a terrible character and and I like Wilder that's the thing he's an exciting fighter I actually like Wilder but I got to call a spade a spade and um I don't think he ever would have fought Joshua to be honest I mean he turned down a 100 million dollars a 100 million dollar deal to fight Joshua twice he so basically he would have gotten 20 million to fight Brazil which I know he didn't make 20 million to fight Brazil and he would have got 40 million to fight Joshua um and if there was a rematch, you know, either one of the guys would have lost. So guaranteed there would have been a rematch. He would have got another forty million for the rematch. Now that's all gone because Joshua lost, which is unfortunate. Um, still think that fight could happen someday. Never know. Um, but obviously that's lost some. Uh, you know, that fight isn't in as high of demand as it as it once was. The aura of you know two undefeated knockout guys that would have been huge i still think though joshua versus fury in the uk is just as big um so we'll see we'll see what happens uh, i just wanted to give my you know my thoughts on this this fight um that's it for this one keep your eye out for the uh ufc 238 prediction coming out next week that's it for this one peace